Hey there cats and kitties, I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video I wanted to talk a little bit about Season 2 of Ushio Tutoro, which is basically the final 13 episodes that wraps up the story and everything like that. And uh, I was really compelled to want to talk about it because I watched them all, pretty much marathoned them after the 13th and final episode had aired, and uh, I was just amazed by the twists and turns in the story, the sort of shocking elements, how emotional it got. I mean, there were elements definitely in the first season that really got emotional for me and things like that, dealing with the afterlife, dealing with characters who felt alone in the world and the friendships and the camaraderies that were, you know, born between Ushio and these other respective characters. You think of Saya and things along those lines. And um, it just really wowed me because uh, as a writer, I go into like movies and anime series and there's a level of predictability sometimes story-wise, you know, story elements, story beats that you can pick up on, even if you're not necessarily creative. Um, and <laughs> Ushio Tutora Season 2 really threw me for a loop time and again. They did so many unexpected things that I couldn't have easily predicted. Um, and just how emotional it got, as I say, in this fight against Hakuman no Mono, it, it just really, really, you know, it was exuberant for me. It was such a pleasure to watch because there was so much of the story that I just didn't know what direction it was going to go in. Um, you think of from right out of the gate, you know, all of the East and West Yokai and everyone Ushio and Toro know basically have had their memories wiped by the heel the you know the yokai <laughs> look like sort of sperms with eyeballs and, and blades on them they have gotten into their minds and eaten away all the memories of ushio and tora and the first sign of this comes right after ushio is having this moment with asuko you know and like he's looking at her he's finally realizing just how much she means to him and in the sort of opposite of that moment, she's looking at him wide-eyed and, and possibly about to have the same realization, even though she's, you know, she kind of knows. She's been tiptoeing around the whole fact that she likes him and everything like that. And she's willing to almost give him off to uh, Mayu and everything. But um, there there definitely is a sort of Sunday aspect to it. But rather than have that sort of, you know, reciprocative moment, this is when... Hakuma no Mono's memory wipe happens and suddenly she's like dialing back she's like who the hell are you and you know he follows her home and she can't make sense out of why and even her family doesn't know him and this is very much the tipping point of a large chunk of season two where so many of their allies that they had born don't know them don't know how important they are to this and there's even a point where you have time travel becoming involved, and there's basically the prediction that the beast spear will shatter. And so the East and West Yokai, they kidnap Mayu. They're going to sacrifice her because much as answering the speculation all through season one, she has that lineage to Jimei and everything like that. And she's, you know, the sort of current living survivor and, and there is that relatability sort of cousin relatability you find out because of this between of course Ushio and you know Mayu and um there's that whole element of Asuko is willing to sacrifice herself this was one of those first twists that I didn't see coming and became very emotional because she Literally, she's like letting Mayu have the guy that they've been, you know, both in love with. They don't really know who he is because, you know, of course, their memories have been wiped. But there's that void and they can understand fitting around that void that someone was there. It was the cat with the spear, you know, whoever he was in their minds. They don't know. And she's actually climbing the steps of this cauldron that they're going to reform. They believe they have to reform a brand new beast spear. And they can only do so with a soul's sacrifice. And so Asuka's about to do that. And of course, at the last second, Ushio and Toro show up, or at least Ushio. And it's amazing to me because they really, they, they get covered with burns. They're almost completely and utterly killed. Uh, I, I think Toro comes in at the last second to blow the cauldron, the smithereens, so they don't actually go into the molten, uh, you know, metal and everything like that. Um, but I was, I was 
on the edge of my seat, gritting my teeth, watching that entire sequence and not sure what was going to happen. At that point, it was like all bets were off. Who was going to live and who was going to die? I wasn't exactly sure. And you had uh, basically Toto, you know, dealing with this brand new, you know, Yokai Gurren, who was one of the lackeys of Hakuman no Mono, who was basically a spitting image of, you know, Toto. And there's that whole, you basically are, are awakening to the backstory of Toto. What? came to be, how he came to be, and his links. Uh, let me say there's spoilers ahead if you haven't seen season two of Ushio Tutora, but um, the whole idea of the link that exists between Tora and Hakuman blew my ever-loving mind. Like, I never could have predicted how exactly down, uh, far down the rabbit hole it would all go. Um, and as I say, he has Gurren, who is this Asafuse, uh, or however it's pronounced, these are souls, we find out there are a bunch of them, and they have been basically uh, rendered stone while Hakuman has been asleep. They are going to be awakened when Hakuman becomes a threat to the world again because they want to fight him. They all have this deep-seated hatred for Hakuman. And this is very much sort of, you know, pinioned in the birth of who Tora is. His former, as we find out, human form was someone who hated humanity because he was born under a bad sign, a shooting star, and he was mocked and, and you know, scolded for that and, and basically throwing rocks at him and chasing him out of town. He comes back a hero during wartime and all this kind of stuff and he really feels everyone is hypocritical until finally he finds this sister and young boy who he can connect with and it's the first time he smiles and Ushio is witnessing all of this during a downtime after the Beast Spear has been destroyed and uh, he's like, you know, floating under water, Hakuman seems to be winning the day. And lo and behold, do we have this, you know, sort of psychic flashback where Ushio is finally understanding how Hakuman was born. The shooting star, the dark energy of humanity, it festered itself and embedded itself in the human that Toro once was, and I'm like watching this mouth agape, like, you, you can't be serious, this is so crazy to think that the link is that deep-seated between these main characters and their enemy, their nemesis. And adding to that, you know, <laughs> the whole idea that the Beast Spear, even shattered, is still alive, it still resonates power, and it's still the saving grace as long as you put Ushio and Tora together. Not to get ahead of myself, but when it comes to the final battle, all of East and West Yokai, all of humanity are kept from without the barrier that they've gotten Hakuman in, in the final stages, and it's directly down to Ushio and Tora. Once they've realized and learned so many lessons and they're working together, and they vow, to assist each other and and it's that camaraderie that sense of togetherness and friendship and everything they've been through the evolution of these characters being sort of the key component to taking Hakuman down just hell yeah <laughs> you know um and again talking about shocking moments how about Nagare uh basically turning rogue becoming their enemy deciding to side with Hakuman and it's kind of arguable that that all happened a little bit too quickly for my taste. At least marathoning the episodes, uh, it felt too quick where he just, he appears and suddenly he's, you know, saying he's the enemy and we find out there's some aspect of him being influenced by one of Hakuman's avatars and the, the one that subsequently it's going around pretending it's g and getting humanity to want to destroy Hakuman early and it's really going to sink Japan and all this kind of stuff if they do it, which they do. And uh, it's only, you know, the East and West Yokai deciding, or certain elements of those two uh, factions, deciding to become stone and replace the pillar that humanity destroyed and, and freeing, you know, they, they ended up freeing uh, Hakuman as a result. But that whole thing with Nagari, and of course, he and Tora fighting, Ushio pleading with Tora not to kill him, to take it easy, to just, you know, get the fight out of your system and put him in his place. But he ends up dying, and that was a shock. And then later, you know, you have uh, Hyo coming back and fending off Gurren because he realizes Gurren is the one who took his wife and child, and he, he is protecting a woman who 
basically has a kid that's like seven years old or whatever it is and she doesn't you know she resents the kid and hates the kid because basically uh, she's a Hollywood actress she's stuck up she's a snob and the guy that you know she had the kid with he wanted the kid she didn't and he ran off and yada yada was killed I guess in uh, one of the Hockerman attacks how emotional that got because the distraught family sort of you know unit that whole aspect always resonates with me and to see him taking effectively Gurnan out and saving the lives of this woman and child who they eventually find love for each other. The, the child already loves, you know, the mother, but the mother finally understands how much the child means to her as a result of this. And we see he'll die right there. Like, her characters, I wouldn't have guessed were going to die. And a lot of the main characters are able to reconnect with family and spirits they lost, uh, you know, whether it be their fathers or their mothers or whatever it is. Um, even Ushio being able to reconnect with his mother. I never would have guessed by the end that his mother was going to survive. I had it pegged that she was probably going to die in all of the heat of this and have to sacrifice herself, either her and or Mayu, because Mayu was very much integral in creating the barrier at that point to, uh, you know, keep Hakuman in chains and everything like that. And it, it was, like I say, it was all bets were off. Who was going to live and who was going to die? I really didn't know. And in the end, Tora's finally being freed and finally being able to move on really hit me. <laughs> because you have Ushio crying his eyes out, understandably, screaming, Tora! You know, as Tora's spirit just erupts into that green energy and dissipates and everything kind of goes back to normal for everybody after that. Ushio, Asuko, Mayu, you know, they all have their sort of going back to school days life. And, and you, you know, you have his mother, of course, uh, reuniting with the father. And that's kind of kooky. They realize they have the day alone together, you know. Um, <laughs> and it was it was like a bittersweet ending. It was a happy ending overall, but it was bittersweet because of all the characters we lost and there were some characters arguably that I wish we could have seen more of in season two and they had some shining moments toward the end of it um, and a lot of that was you know characters reconnecting with the souls they lost as uh, Saya had opened up the spirit realm and all that kind of stuff and um, it was just mesmerizing it was because of its unpredictability as far as I'm concerned not having been familiar with the source material or the original adaptation and I wonder how far or, 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 you know, closely related to that original adaptation, uh, the anime adaptation that preceded it, I wonder how closely they relate. Because um, I'm sure there were liberties taken. I remember having discussions during season one with some of you guys that uh, there were some, you know, sort of uh, story elements that were moved around and, you know, uh, saved for later or edited out and all that kind of stuff. And I really began to wonder as this was culminating if this was staying true to how it all played out originally or not. I, I don't really know, but um, for what it's worth, it was um, an amazing watch. And uh, I, I just couldn't believe so many of those twists and turns, so many of those, you know, character moments and, and the depth that this series brought forth, not only in its characterization, but the action. There were, there were some really, you know, engrossing action sequences and... Uh, of course, the flashbacks, learning about Toto's history, everything like that. Just, And then if you stay past the, the final credits, you know, there's that sort of tease where maybe one day, someday, and you hear Toto and Ushio fighting again. And it's kind of like a great sort of cap for the end of the series, but it also made me think of, you know, think of the time travel element that was involved in certain aspects of this story. And really, you as the viewer, you can go back in time, and you can go back to episode one and watch it all over again. And um, I felt like that really was what was embodied by that little tease at the end. Not necessarily that there's going to be uh, another story to come eventually someday. Maybe there will be, maybe there won't be. But that you can go back to the beginning and experience it all over again. And it really makes me want to watch the original adaptation as well, because... You know, to see what differences there were, see what similarities there were. It would be like re-experiencing the story, but completely anew because you don't exactly know how everything is going to, you know, be formatted and unfold as the story goes. 
So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share my thoughts on Season 2 of Ushio Tutoro with you guys because it was really overwhelmingly awesome. I really enjoyed watching it, and um, it, it got me back into sp the spirit, <laughs> no pun intended, of wanting to watch anime and talk about it a little bit. And uh, so, yeah, um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this discussion and you enjoyed Season 2 of Ushio Tutoro if you... Uh, did you know let me know in the comments below what you loved about it if you felt the same way i did about the twists and turns and shocks and unexpected aspects to it and uh if you didn't like it or you felt certain aspects of it dissatisfied that's welcome too anything goes in the comments below so otherwise i hope this video finds you well that'll be pretty much it for me on this and i'll catch you all later peace